Thanks, Alan. Now, research shows that fluctuating levels of hormones play a key role in shaping the course of a woman's menstrual cycle, mood, sleep pattern, and many other things. And if you find that your hormones are completely taking over your life, then maybe it's time to make a change. Well, joining me today with some very helpful advice and tips on this is leading nutritionist in women's health, Dr. Marilyn Glenville. Marilyn, you're very welcome. Good morning, Claire. And we've been having a good chat about the array of food you have here. Yeah. And I think people would be surprised that you don't have pills and supplements, mm -hmm. that food is the first protocol and the first medicine. It is, it is always. And when you look at women's health, there can be so many hormonal issues. There could be premenstrual symptoms, there could be polycystic ovary syndrome, fibroids, endometriosis, maybe problems around fertility. And then all the issues as women come up to the menopause and my passion is really using nutrition to help women get their hormones back in balance. So what are the main problems that people will have hormonally? What are the main causes and problems that they'll find? Well, they'll find they get a lot of uh, problems with lack of energy. There could be irritability, anxiety, lack of concentration. They're not sleeping, lightheadedness, things that can go on with the cycle or with polycystic ovary syndrome. They're finding out they're getting excess hair. So more of the dominance of the male hormones or they're putting on weight. So there are all these issues. Then we get to the menopause and there could be hot flushes and night sweats. So for us as women, there are are real roller coasters of hormones through our life which create different symptoms that make us feel unwell that affect the quality of our life and that's not good because we want to feel well in ourselves and do the things we want to with good energy. I think a lot of women just sort of accept that this is the way things are, that there's a lot going on on a monthly basis and that one week you're feeling this way and one week you're feeling another way and you just go with the flow but you think there's a lot of things you can actually do about it, you shouldn't accept it particularly if it's becoming a problem in your life. Yes, and I don't think we should accept it because although we've got these hormones going on and on a roller coaster, it shouldn't have to affect how we work and how we, our relationships, which it can do. And I have a real passion around helping women balance their hormones. That's why I've come over this week. So I'm in uh, Dublin tomorrow night and then Galway Wednesday night and Cork Thursday night, really helping women using their food to get their hormones back in balance. And we've got a good array here. We're thinking more in terms of the Mediterranean diet, but there are really key things like putting phytoestrogens in. What they are phytoestrogens? They actually have a balancing effect on hormones, although we could think they may be estrogenic because yeah. of the name. And then people with, or women with fibroids or endometriosis or even history of breast cancer would think, oh, well, I shouldn't be eating those. But they actually have a balancing effect on hormones. So they would be in the beans that we've got here, the flax seeds, things like the hummus. So anything that's got lentils in, kidney beans, chickpeas, flax seeds have this balancing effect on our hormones, no matter what age or stage we are in our life. So they are really important foods to include. And we can just buy a pot of hummus. It doesn't have to be a lot of work to cook or make these foods. Um, what about then the causes? I mean, I said to you earlier, I thought polycystic ovaries, things like that, or it's just you were born that way or you had more of an inclination to have them, but they can be caused by things. So what causes hormonal imbalance? A lot of it can be down to our diet. Stress is going to make a big impact as well. So a lot of women where stress is really high nowadays, there's no time for me, we're juggling work and children and family life. That in itself can change our hormone balance or give us the symptoms that are going to change the cycle. Even for young women, if they go through something traumatic or, a, say, a car accident, their periods could stop for even up to six months in their 20s. So our stress impact can have a huge effect on our cycle or make it irregular. And PCOS, I mean, the research in the medical literature, it's all about controlling our blood sugar because women with PCOS are insulin resistant and their insulin levels cause their ovaries to produce more male hormones, so they get excess hair, acne, they end up putting weight around the middle of the body. So getting their blood sugar in balance, making sure they're eating little and often good levels of protein, and we've got good things like eggs here, which are almost a superfood, would be making sure that they're really eating well and can overcome that PCOS and even help them get pregnant if the PCOS is stopping them ovulating and conceiving, which is often a main thing for that condition. Yeah, you've touched on a couple of the things, the, the proteins and the phytoestrogens. What are the other balances that we can use or balancers that we can use for our hormones? And the other big balance are the omega-3 fats. Okay. These are essential fatty acids. And what it means nutritionally is we cannot make them in our body. We have to get them in from our food or even supplements. And a lot of women I see in the clinic have gone on no-fat or low-fat diets because they've had this perception 
that all fat is bad. So they've taken everything out. So they're missing the oily fish, the nuts and seeds, the avocado, and even things like in the egg yolks, there's omega-3s. And we're they very are very calorie conscious, aren't we? Especially women, you're watching your weight, you're trying to do this, yes. you're trying to do that, and fat just sounds like a bad thing. I know, but then we've taken all the good fats out mm -hmm. as well as the bad fats, so, and that's not good. And the omega-3s actually have an anti-inflammatory effect and they help with blood flow. So you think of those women with endometriosis, painful periods, it's all about the inflammation that's going on in the reproductive system or heavy periods, they help with blood flow. So we have really good research that shows that if we make small, simple, practical tips with our food, we can really make a difference in balancing our hormones and feeling well during the cycle and through the menopause as well. So how much, I mean, are you throwing half an avocado into the smoothie in the morning? Are they small changes or radical changes? They can be really small changes. It could be flax seeds, ground flax seeds on the porridge. It could be an omelette at lunchtime. It could be having some oily fish. It could be smoked mackerel, salmon, that sort of thing. It could be a pot of hummus. But it is also means taking out the foods that are have a negative effect, like the bad fats, the trans fats, and a lot of sugar and the refined carbohydrates. So things where the fiber has been removed actually cause our blood sugar to go on this roller coaster, which can make us feel really irritable, anxious. It actually makes us feel more stressed than we should be. And we lose our energy because our food is supposed to be like putting petrol in the car. It's the fuel to keep us going. And a lot of women I see in the clinic feel tired all the time. That's their main symptom. And they don't have the energy to do what they really want to do. So getting our blood sugar in balance, eating little and often, eating good foods that don't act like a quick fix. So we've got things that are, the energy is more stable, our mood is stable. We just feel more balanced and that's what we're after. So what kind of results have you seen in the clinic then? People coming in who can't get pregnant, who are tired all the time. Have you seen a complete 360 in some women? Oh, amazing, yes. And I've got clinics now in Dublin, Cork, Galway, Kilkenny, glenvillenutrition.ie. And we help women who are struggling to conceive, either want to conceive naturally, or they may be going for IVF and they want to boost the success rate. So they use the nutrition alongside it also for men as well, because we have to help them for fertility. Oh, but do we? Oh, <laughs> we do. <laughs> Takes two to tango, as they say. <laughs> so, yes, for fertility, it's both the man and the woman. But, yes, I mean, PCOS, helping women get pregnant who never thought they would do, and doing it naturally without having to use the drug. So Incredible. It's so Absolutely. rewarding. Amazing work, yeah. Maren. Thank you very much. You're welcome, now, you are sticking Claire. around for a Q&A, so oh, we're, we're not saying a full goodbye. And as I say, we are going to have questions um, at about quarter past ten. So if you want to send them in to rndam at tv3.ie and Marilyn will answer as many as we can a little bit later on.